In 1974, OSHA adopted machine guarding regulations. The standard requires that any machine part, function, or process that may cause injury must be safeguarded to protect employees. Machine parts that rotate, slide, changes elevation, or intersects with other parts of the machine. In a nutshell, if it moves and could cause injury, it must be guarded. There are three areas on a machine that create a hazard. The point of operation where the work is done, such as casting, cutting, shaping, boring, and forming. The power transmission apparatus is the device that transmits power to the machine. Flywheels, pulleys, belts, couplings, spindles, chains, cranks, and gears are typical components. Other moving parts of the equipment, like the closing of a die in a die casting machine and the shot cylinder, moving to force molten metal into a die. There are several hazards inherent in die casting machines that must be guarded, like the toggle linkage, which moves the die open and closed, and provides locking tonnage prior to metal injection. The injection sleeve and tip, which provides the power and speed required to inject molten metal into the die. The safety ratchet prevents the machine from closing inadvertently. The operator's door, which shields the operator from hazards during the metal injection portion of the cycle. In a horizontal cold chamber die casting machine, molten metal ladled into the pour hole of the shot sleeve may splash onto the shot sleeve and freeze. An operator should never attempt to brush away these drippings with his hand or place his finger in the pour hole. Metal drippings must be removed with a tool, such as a metal scraper. Occasionally, the injection plunger tip of a cold chamber machine will seize in the shot sleeve. There are safe procedures for removing the stuck plunger, and they must be adhered to even if they are time-consuming. Fixture designs can be implemented to safely hold the bar between the die halves to force out the stuck plunger. Placing a pipe between the open halves of the die and holding it with your hand while closing the machine to force out the plunger tip is an unsafe procedure and must not be used. If no provisions have been made for safe removal of stuck die plungers, Shut the machine down to a zero energy state with the die open to remove the cover half of the die. Disconnect the plunger rod, remove the cover half of the die, and remove the plunger, rod, and shot sleeve. A removable retainer will ease the removal of the shot sleeve to access the stuck plunger without the need to remove the cover half of the die. Hot chamber die casting machines use a nozzle called the gooseneck to transfer molten metal from the pressure chamber to the die. Excessive pressure can deform the sealing gaskets at both ends of the gooseneck and can cause the nozzle to leak. When this leakage occurs, the molten metal may spray out of the nozzle, creating a burn hazard. Molten metal can spit from the die parting plane at a high velocity during metal injection. Safety gates and operator doors should be installed and properly maintained on all die casting machines, and spit guards mounted on the die block will stop the flying metal. A bursting biscuit occurs on a cold chamber machine if the metal in the die is not adequately solidified when the die opens and while the plunger continues to apply pressure to the biscuit. The explosion will send molten metal around the machine and can cause severe injuries. Properly design and installed safety doors guard against this hazard. Safety doors should also be interlocked to the machine operation to prevent opening until the die has opened. An operator's door prevents entry to the machine when it's operating and protects the operator from metal spitting at the parting line. Closing that door should be easy and the leading edge of the door should have a sensing device to stop or reverse the door if it strikes something while it's closing. The safety ratchet has a notched bar that moves with the moving platen or toggle crosshead and prevents accidental movement of the die casting machine closing system. The safety ratchet is normally on top of the machine, so it is a hazard only when someone climbs on the machine. Die casting machines also have chain or gear drives that must be guarded during machine operation. There's a space between the mechanical bumper pin plate and the movable platen that can present a dangerous pinch point. Normally, the linkage area guards will protect this pinch point, but during die installation or adjustment, the machine must be shut down and placed in a zero energy state. The injection hydraulic and die closing cylinders of a die casting machine are usually operated with an accumulator hydraulic circuit. Since the accumulator is under extremely high pressure, a leak or a shift of the valve could cause the cylinder to move unexpectedly, even when the machine is locked out or the pump is off. Newer die casting machines automatically depressurize the accumulator when the machine is shut down. 
It's essential that procedures be adopted to put the machine in a zero-energy state condition before any type of maintenance work is done. High-pressure hydraulic systems on die-casting machines also utilize special hoses. These hoses should be regularly inspected for wear and, when required, replaced with equal quality hose material. Avoid padding hoses that rub against each other or against other parts of the machine to prevent abrading. Restraining these hoses with chains or other means prevents hoses from whipping around if they were to ever break or rupture. And even though modern hydraulic fluid is fire resistant, it's not fireproof. When hydraulic fluid comes in contact with high temperature sources such as molten metal, it can burn. All machines should be equipped with dual button close controls that require the operator to start the machine using both hands. If the machine controls are mounted on a movable pedestal, the pedestal should be far enough from the opening and closing of the machine to prevent the operators from entering the die area while manipulating the controls. Electrical controls like open electrical boxes and loose conduit connectors can also be hazardous to employees. Electrical control panels have interlocks for protection from high voltage. It may be necessary to bypass the interlock for troubleshooting with management approval and safety precautions. But never deactivate limit switches or interlocks without proper approval. Electrical safety should always be a priority in any operation. Only qualified personnel should be allowed to work on electrical systems. Arc flash and electrical shock can severely injure and kill employees who don't follow electrical safety standards. Varying types of electrical gear and clothing are required to protect the individual performing these operations. Before any electrical work is started, the machine must be locked out and or tagged out and the machine placed in a zero energy state condition. Changes should not be made to a wiring layout without full prior consultation with the machine builder. When a wire is disconnected, it must be identified with a tag to avoid improper reconnection. If disconnection is temporary, wires must be guarded and disconnected from feed wires. Simple changes to an electrical layout can result in extremely hazardous conditions when the machine is powered up. All electrical tools must be grounded or double insulated. Check for loose electrical conduits and fittings and for broken or frayed wires. Personnel should not use flexible or rigid electrical conduit as a stepping or standing place. Die casting dies can be very complex with many hazards, such as the ejector plate of the die moves the ejector pins forward to eject the casting from the die. This motion can create several pinch hazards under several circumstances. Die parting spit which occurs when molten metal leaves the die cavity at high speed. Core cylinders and slides, which present motion and pinch hazards as the die opens and closes. Angle pins, which can create snag and pinch hazards while the die is in operation. Ejector pins, which can snag clothing or cause lacerations to the operator who is working in or on the die. Stuck castings. Cast-in inserts, which must be placed manually in the die while it is in production and while the die is hot. Core slide springs, which are compressed as the die closes and create potential energy that can present hazards. Whenever entry into the immediate die area is required, the machine should be placed in a zero energy state by turning off the main power, blocking the die open, blocking or removing the injection ram on hot chamber machines, depressurizing the accumulator and the machine. Many types of auxiliary equipment are used in modern die casting operations, sometimes as part of a die casting cell, where pieces of equipment are interlocked and function as an integrated production system. Areas to pay attention to in order to ensure safe operation include the mechanical ladle area, hydraulic trim presses used to remove runners, flash, and gates and runners from the castings, extractors, Areas which move parts out of the die casting machine and into other post casting operations have mechanical extracting arms that swing vertically and horizontally. Personnel should not enter these areas when the equipment is operating. A gate for entry of setup and maintenance personnel must be interlocked with the machine control circuits to stop the machine when the gate is opened. Pits are fall hazards and must be properly guarded. Conveyors have a variety of pinch or snag hazards and obviously should never be ridden.
Only authorized employees who have been thoroughly trained should use cranes and hoists, and it's best to use a spotter to watch for people and equipment while an employee is operating cranes and hoists. The weight of die components should be clearly marked. It's essential that employees refer to and follow the load ratings marked on hoists and do not exceed their limit. Inspection of hooks, lifting eyes, and cables should be done on a regular schedule to ensure that nothing has been damaged. Any deficiencies noted during the inspection should be reported immediately.